invent a, a new kind of uh, ceramic for sushi to be sold uh, in Japan through IKEA. This change of skills required, of course, one generation. Now, we, in the in Doitung area, we have the highest level of uh, uh, high school education in the whole country, and the per capita income uh, of, the, of the area of Doitung is now 70% higher than the, uh, the average of uh, Bangkok. So now this experience has been chosen by the United Nations as a good practice of sustainability, and we are receiving uh, um, visits from all over the world uh, to try to understand the model and replicate it. Yeah, so it's an interesting point that you're making that the Mafa Long Foundation didn't receive grants, it didn't, uh, it's, it's no longer uh, funded by the public or by private, it's, it's self-sustaining. So uh, that leads into my next question, the unique feature of the um, Mafa Long Foundation is its approach to sustainable development and specifically how the foundation no longer relies on outside sources for funding. Uh, instead is self-funding. Correct. Yes. Um, can you talk a little bit how this foundation was able to achieve that? And what is the role of social businesses in the future of uh, social development and in the global economy for years to come? Can we make social change while still clearing a budget? Yeah. Foundation does not mean funding. Mm -hmm. There are two different concepts. Foundation means uh, uh, an availability of a capital which is tax-free, so therefore it does not pay taxes for its income. As far as this uh, uh, income is not uh, uh, distributed, there are no dividends for the shareholders, and uh, all the profit is uh, invested in common good. We are profit-friendly. Contrary to most non-governmental organizations and foreign aid in the, in the world, uh, we cannot be called uh, no profit because often no profit means uh, losing money. We are profit friendly. We like to make money, and they call it full profit. That means uh, for us profit is a tool, it's not a goal, but it is an important tool. We want to make money in order to reinvest it in public good. So the first phase that you mentioned, when the operation was not self-sustained, uh, it was funded by the investment of the investment banks. But all that investment had to be given back. So when we reached the, the break-even point, that is the, more or less around the year 2000, 17 years ago, uh, it meant that we were able to pay all our debt. So all the new profit was profit for reinvestment and no longer to pay the previous uh, availability of uh, uh, credit. Achieving a high profit like we have now, high value added, and we are beyond 40% of revenue. So our profit is 40% of revenue, one of the most successful money-making operations I know in, in rural areas. Um, it works because it makes the social enterprise credible to everybody. So everybody who is a member of the social enterprise, there are 1,700 staff and practically all the villages of the area have somebody in the family involved or directly in the social enterprise or indirectly because they produce coffee or orchids or macadamia which is then bought by the project. So the whole life is a social enterprise. I think this is a very interesting model for the future. The model of the past that you are living in the West, in particular in the United States and in Europe, Everybody knows it. It was uh, the company makes money, uh, causing damage to the society, most often in various aspects, not only public health, but also in the organization of the financing, in the organization of the education, and so on. Then the state charges taxes to the company to redistribute that richness and try to repair uh, the damage done by the uh, capitalism. And then finally you have the third sector, or the NGOs, or the aid in general, uh, who try to repair the damage of this structure. This is no longer sustainable. In the future, in particular in Asia, a lot of experiments are now uh, redesigning 
the whole system of uh, uh, socio-economic interaction among communities, where producing profit is not a damage to the environment. Uh, we made peace. Our people made peace between the forest and the people. The forest in our land is happy having the people, and the people is having to have, to have the forest. So the relationship is uh, synergetic, uh, is not uh, an exploitation, is, uh, the people are not parasiting the environment, the people are exploiting in a sustainable way. And uh, there is no bad side effect, there is no damage on the environment, there is no damage on the community, so we don't have uh, unhappy people, we don't have depression, we don't have people using drugs, we don't have violence against women or any other kind of violence among the different ethnic groups. People have understood that uh, the human DNA, the way how the human uh, person is designed, is to become happy. But the only way to become happy is through cooperation, not through competition. All other socioeconomic models which impose very heavy competition damage the human DNA. In fact, they create uh, diseases, violence, depression, fight, and uh, failing systems. You have failing governments in the US, you have failing governments in Europe, you have failing governments all over the previous model has been applied. The future is about a more integrated uh, cooperation between what we do, what we live, and what we want, which of course is happiness. Is, uh, to follow up on that, is that a, a mind shift change or is it a, an actual like economic model that needs to be applied? Well, that is probably a bit uh, <laughs> too early to decide and I'm not a prophet. I have my own opinion. I'm a biologist mm -hmm. and uh, I think that after a few thousand years of experimentation in a way where our Homo sapiens uh, species uh, has been uh, the main enemy of our species. We have the biggest brain ever seen in any animal, and uh, our capacity of cooperation is much smaller than one of the bees. The honeybees uh, have uh, approximately one forty thousand part, so forty thousand times less brain than what we have, and they cooperate much better. The bees uh, do not bomb each other. The, bee, the bees know what is good for the others, and the bees uh, focus on the future generation. We don't do that. If we start to put all of our brain together, I think we will achieve a change of the species. Instead of Homo sapiens sapiens, which means uh, intelligent and wise, but not wise enough to cooperate, not wise enough to keep uh, this planet that we have, not wise enough to elect leaders who understand what climate change is about. Not wise enough to elect leaders who understand that it's not the skin or the religion who makes a person of value. So when these pieces will change, we become Homo sapiens solicitous, which means smart enough, intelligent enough to take care of the others. We are probably very close to that change because we have seen communities around the world who are doing that, like, for example, to take to mention one, Bhutan, who decided to use uh, the happiness uh, index as a way to measure the growth. Uh, Costa Rica, who got rid of the army because they understood there was no point mm -hmm. to kill the neighbors. And others, like Thailand, which is applying uh, the uh, sufficiency economy theory by His Majesty the King. So there are experiments around the world who will demonstrate that another model is possible. And the acceleration that you ask, how long will it take, when will it happen? Well, it depends largely on how fast the failure of the other system will happen. We have seen that democracy is failing because it's not applying enough evidence, scientific evidence, it's not choosing the right leaders. And it might take also less than one generation. I will probably not be there, but I'm quite sure that uh, human brain and human DNA is strong enough to improve the situation. Thank you so much so for, your, uh, for your time. Okay. And anything you want to add, we can do it through email. Okay? Yeah, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. 
That's it on another episode of UC3P. Before you go, I want to get you excited about some of our upcoming episodes. We're going to be having an episode on climate change, an interview with a prominent policy leader in the education field, and the next iteration of our Naked Love miniseries. Make sure you catch it all by going to your podcasting app and subscribing to UC3P. Thanks, listeners, and stay tuned.